All right, we're almost at the end of this beautiful speech that the Lubavitcher Rebbe gave in 1991, in this week's Torah portion, Parshat um, Masai. And if you remember the, 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 the connections and the, the teachings that the Rebbe gave us previously, that uh, this is, we're going from the fourth book of the Torah to the fifth book of the Torah, and that corresponds to the what's called the fourth redemption to the fifth redemption. And we said that that's the third temple. That's why we say chazak, chazak, benit chazek, that we should be strong, strong, and become strengthened. That refers to the first temple, chazak, chazak, benit chazek, three times strong, strong, be strong, that we say at the end of the Torah reading this week, because it finishes the book of, the fourth book of the Torah, the of Numbers. So the response corresponds to the three temples, chazak, chazak, benit chazek, and then there's a level which is even higher of unity. That's the level which is called number four. And then there's number five. Remember, we learned, and this can all be accomplished by the message we can learn from uh, the last day of the month of, I mean, the first day, I'm sorry, the first day of the month of, of, huh? The first day of the month of, of, of is the last, is the, the, the I'm sorry, of is the fifth month of the year fifth month of the year, and that the first day of the month of Av, it says clearly in the Torah, we learned it, is, is the day that Aaron passed away. It says clearly in the Torah, the month of Av is the month, excuse me, that Aaron, Moses' brother, he passed away. And we can learn a tremendous message about Aaron, which Aaron is the thing of love, loving your neighbor, especially every Jew, loving every other Jew. That's what we said before. And this is even hinted at in Aaron's name. Aaron's name is written Aleph, Hey, that's the first two letters of love, Ahava. Resh is Rabba, big love. And the Nun comes all the way down to the lowest. Remember, that's what we said. To the lowest aspects, that is going to not just bring the redemption, it'll even more, by, by fixing up what the cause of the, of the exile was hatred. Not only that, but says the Rebbe, the fact is, is that the, now we're already ready for the redemption. We're ready. The redemption is already basically here. We just have to make the vessels. The vessel for this redemption is loving every other Jew. Loving every Jew. Every Jew should love every other Jew. Okay, so it says... This is also what it says in Pirkei Avod. Remember, it says that Rabbi Shimon said, yeah, we did this yesterday, but it's worthwhile repeating. You have to be careful in saying Shema and prayer. Now, the word Zahir means to be careful, but the word Zahir also means to shine. So this is Rabbi Shimon. We said before, and this is called referring probably to Rabbi Shimon ben Netanel who he was spoken about before, one of the five pupils of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. So, but usually when it says Rabbi Shimon, it's talking about Rabbi Shimon, usually is Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. Remember, we learned this yesterday. Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, he was something totally different than all of the other wise men of the Talmud, all of them. That he, first of all, wrote this book called the Zohar, and he was an expert, a genius, in all aspects of the Torah, revealed and hidden. That usually when it says Rabbi Shimon, it means Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. So it could be that that's what it's talking about, Rabbi Shimon. But Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says something, as this is already a whole new level of importance. Even though the Rabbi Shimon Bar Ben Ben Ben, ben uh, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the Rabbi Shimon Ben Natanel one of the pupils of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai was also a tremendously holy person. But no one was anything compared to Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai. And Rabbi Shimon bar Yochai, he said, you have to be careful in saying Shema and prayer. And didn't just say careful, he said Zahir means you have to shine. Even though the main thing of Rabbi Shimon was learning Torah. <clears throat> but, and that was the whole thing of Rabbi Shimon. All, all the time, he never stopped learning Torah. It says Torah to emunato. The Torah was Rabbi Shimon's only occupation. That's all he did. 
But Rabbi Shimon realized that this is not for everybody. It's only certain people. Therefore, Rabbi Shimon said to his pupils, it's very nice to be like me, that you learn the Torah, nothing like the Torah, but you have to be careful with Shema and prayer. Why? What's the thing of Shema? You have to not just be careful, you have to shine. Shine means light. Like Zohar or Rakia. Even though the main thing of light also comes from learning the Torah, but you, when you learn the Torah, you have to be always aware of where the Torah is coming from. It's coming from God. And the awareness of God, you only really develop when you pray. Torah or the Torah is light. Nevertheless, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the main thing of the Torah, but Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he was interested in the benefit of all of the Jews and eventually all the world, but especially all the Jews that also by all the other Jews that weren't on his level, that the Torah should be shining and their life should be shining by means of saying Shema, thinking of the words, what it means, Shema Yisrael and prayer. Directing your attention to the Creator all the time. I'll do it like it says, like it says, you should be one of the pupils of Aaron. Love the Briot. You should love even the most simple people and make them come close to Torah. That was Rabbi Shimon Bayachai also. He loved all of the Jews, and therefore he wanted them to come close to the Torah. By means of this, it will benefit the whole world. Yeshua, we can say that this is also not just a teaching, but it is also a, how do you say, empowering. And that we should be shining when we say the words of Shema Yisrael. I don't know Eloheinu, I don't know We should think about these words. This is by Rabbi Shimon, namely that Rabbi Shimon by Yochai, his whole thing it was learning Torah. He put light and meaning in Shema was drawn down by Rabbi Shimon at a totally different level than we can do it. But nevertheless, by Rabbi Shimon saying this and having it printed in Pirki Avot, this empowers me and you and every single Jew, and every single human being, even though human, other people are not supposed to learn the Torah. But to say the Shema, to realize the oneness of God, that by means of this, this joins the two ways of serving God in <clears throat> namely doing Torah, which is bringing God down, and prayer, which is bringing God revealing up. This, I think, is what we got to yesterday. Yesh, let's see if we can even add on that when you learn the Torah of Rabbi Shimon, it says that the Torah was his only occupation, there are also two ways of learning the Torah. And generally, Torah is bringing God down from above to below. There's also two ways, drawing God down and elevating. Like it says, Rabbi Hilomi Parich. Hilomi Parich said, Hilomi Parich was a famous, he was a, a tremendous tzaddik, and he was an expert in all the aspects of the Torah, including all of the Kabbalah, the mysteries of the Torah. And it says that he, somebody, he had read every book, every book that there was out in Judaism. He knew it. He knew it by heart. He knew it. And he was, everyone said he was a big tzaddik. He was, he got a hold of the book, the Tanya. And he read the Tanya, started the first chapter. And he read the Tanya and he looked at his partner that he was learning with and he said, we're not tzaddikim. We're not tzaddikim. He said, we're not Sadiq. And Hilmi Parad said regarding to the Hasidut, the Hasidic ideas of the third Rebbe of Chabad, the Tzemach Tzedek, and the same thing regarding to all the Rebbe's. She Amirat Hamaimer, that when the Rebbe says, Amamar, like we're learning in the morning, right? We just finished learning the, the Lakuti Torah. These are not genius ideas from an inspired person. And right, these are not tremendously wise, deep, deep wisdom by someone who knows the whole Torah. By a holy person. When the Rebbe says a mimer, he beoven shechina medaberet bitoch grono. This is God speaking through the Rebbe's throat. Like when Moses gave the Torah, everyone knew we're going now into the book of, of Deuteronomy. It doesn't say anywhere there that God spoke to Moses and told him. Everyone knew that what Moses said was what God was just speaking through him. 
I, Moses is a human being, he has a free will. His free will is totally connected to the source of free will. The same thing as when one of the Rebbe's of Chabad says, Maimur, uh, Hasidic discourse, this is God speaking through his mouth. We just finished learning, right? The, the Rebbe is also referring to what he's saying here. But we just finished learning. <clears throat> a mimer in the morning. They're wonderful ideas. They're night at 100%. I, I remember the first time, it took me a while. You know, I, I, I wasn't religious, brought up religious. So I became religious. It took me a long time to sort of, you know, to understand how to read Hebrew. It took me a couple of years, actually. And when I started to understand and of course, I was in this yeshiva for Chabad, and I heard the ideas. And I remember I sat down, and I started learning this book, Luchuti Torah. Luchuti Torah, and I actually understood. I understood the ideas. And I remember thinking to myself, how, how can I understand this? You know, this is just, I'm, we're talking about God here. I'm understanding what God is. Ideas of Kabbalah, anybody can understand you take this gematria and that gematria and this sphere and that sphere and you improve your personality and stuff. That's, that's not really, first of all, it's not really true Kabbalah, but at least the ideas you can understand. But understanding what God is, what God is, usually in these Kabbalah things, especially these fake Kabbalah uh, movements and groups, they're not talking about God. They're not talking about the Torah. They're talking about these different levels. and different. Here the Rebbe is talking about God and I'm understanding this. He's talking about how God is completely incomprehensible and there's all sorts of aspects of God. And I'm understanding these, these ideas, right? A true, there's people that understand infinitely more than me. But, but nevertheless, I understand that he is talking about God himself. God is infinitely close to me. And he says, what, how can he do this? Because the Rebbe is not just a regular person speaking. A Rebbe when he, is a totally different type of person. It's like Moses. Like Moses was totally different than everybody else. And as soon as everyone thought that Moses was like them, that's when they worship the golden calf. Zem Moshe Ha'ish. They said, Mo, this person, Moses, we don't know where he is. Let's worship a golden calf. And we said, yay, let's go. As soon as they don't think that, you don't think there's a possibility that there could be godliness in the world, then that's what brings people to do sins. And of course, there's a lot of fakers and there's a lot of false prophets and a lot of false. But nevertheless, the fact of the matter is, is that although there are Fakers and, 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 and troublemakers and things like that, that they claim to be God and they make big religions and there's billions of people to believe in them. Okay, so that's false. That's wrong. That's a lie. But it doesn't take away from the fact that there is such a thing. These people are not it. But Moses is. It says not only is Moses, but all of the Rebbe's of Chabad, especially, are also that. Other tzaddikim could be also. I'm talking about what I'm familiar with. It says when the Rebbe speaks, it's God is speaking through his mouth. Just like when the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. Now, a more normal person would think, well, if someone could say what God is saying, so it would probably come out with all these mysterious sort of, you know, sayings and words you can't even understand and, you know, abracadabra and the weird stuff that you have to sit years and just to try to figure out what did he say, you know, all that. What did he mean? The master mean, was it? Right? It wouldn't be. The fact of the matter is, is that Moses, for instance, when he spoke the words of God, what's he talking about? If someone steals somebody's ox, and there's witnesses, and this is what God has to talk about. God is talking about oxes. And that's what God is talking about. Yes. <clears throat> that's when the Rebbe says something, is, says a, especially a mimer. This is God speaking. And even though it might be in the most mundane things you can understand it, this is God, Masha Enki, which is not the case, the explanation and all of the, how do you say, questions and answers, which are in the mimer, even when the mimer himself says, after he finishes the mimer, he answers questions, namely, in the Torah, there's two ways of drawing down godliness, from above to below, like, for instance, when the Rebbe says the mimer, and from below to above, asking questions and getting answers. That's also revealing God. Asking questions and getting answers to the questions. That's our work we do from below. Explaining. Al Derek, like it says, the clause the difference between Torah and prayer. So even in Torah, there's these two aspects. Accepting the Torah as it is. That's number one. And other half, which is equally as necessary, but of course, depending on the first, is asking questions on the Torah. Asking questions, trying to find answers. Responsive. 
Ha'amur leil, that we said before, this is also another important thing that we're talking about. In the nine days from Rosh Chodesh of the, from the first day of the month of Av, which is going to be this Friday, in these nine days, <coughs> you should try in your congregation that every day someone should finish a tractate of the Talmud. No, so in addition to this general custom that you should make <coughs> uh, finish <coughs> tractates of the Talmud in these nine days in order to add on happiness of the Torah, because even in these nine, these three weeks, which are terrible, in the nine days especially, when we're thinking about the temple was destroyed, and the reason the temple was destroyed was because of people like me, that they do the same thing as I do. So a person should feel really bad about that, but also you always have to be happy. And what makes you a person happy is the Torah. Learning the Torah makes a person happy. That you're happy when you finish one tractate or a part of the Torah. Something like this is like you say, something like that is when you finish, the, like Simcha's Torah, we make Simcha Torah, we finish the whole five books of Moses. Something like when you finish a tractate, Ki Chazin Atzurba the Rabban and the Shalim Masechta, it says that when he saw a, a rabbi that he finished uh, a tractate as he made a Yom Atavah the Rabbanan. This is in Shabbos, right? 93, where is this? Yeah, Shabbos. Kuf Yudchet. We just finished learning this. We just finished learning it a couple, a couple of days ago. Okay. So he said, when he saw someone, I can't forget, what can I do? I can't forget who it was. Who was it? I don't remember. Rabbi. Who knows? Anyway, when he saw someone finish a tractate, he made a big uh, holiday. Kolel, this includes also giving charity. Look, it says, Sion b'mishpat tepada, that's charity. The charity, giving charity, <clears throat> makes the redemption come closer. Which, by the way, I've said this a lot of times before, but that's the, how do you say, the uh, economic system of Judaism. What's the economic system of Judaism? There's, you know, communism and socialism. Economic system of Judaism is capitalism, 100% capitalism. But what about the poor people? Right, that was the big thing of you know communism. The rich get richer, poor get poorer. Uh, what, what do you do about that? Uh, that's the big flaw in capitalism. So the answer is that's not a flaw in capitalism. That's a flaw in human nature. Human nature. And capitalism gives free reign to human nature. Is human nature good or is it bad? Depends. It's a free will. What are we supposed to do? The rich people that get richer and richer and they have more money, they have more control. So the answer to that question is very simple. Charity. The rich person, are, people are rich because they're supposed to use their free will to give charity to the poor people. That equates the whole, that, how do you say, equates the whole uh, <clears throat> economic system of buying and selling and et cetera, and rich and poor. That the rich people provide for the poor. Give charity. And if they don't know how, so they give, and of course you have to be honest. This all depends on human personality. But the problem with communism in that is it tries to control human nature. No more charity. Communism, no more charity. The government will provide for everybody. You don't have to worry about giving. That's terrible. That is terrible. That denies people the ability to help others. To help lending helping hand. God purposely wants people to be poor, wants other people to be rich, so that the rich should, from their own free will, give to the poor. That's supposed to be the idea. The Yishli Shtadel, we have to be careful. Not the government gives to them, the people give. The Yishli Shtadel, especially in this year, and to make Siumim, to learn the Torah, give charity, but also to learn the Torah and to finish tractates with a lot of people together. And like it says, Le'echad Rabim Yisrael Simcha to unite many of the Jewish people with the tremendous joy that there is in finishing the Torah, including also small children. Not only small children that the, because they're small, they're just ignorant, they don't know, but even really small children. 
that's a sort of a, a unique feature in Chabad. I don't know if others have it also, but in Chabad synagogues, they encourage the bringing of the children. You should try to keep your children quiet to a certain degree, but it's good the children should be in synagogue. It's good that they should be. And if they make noise, no, they make noise. It's not the end of the world, right? It, it should be that they should, you know, you should, but they have to bring the children. The children have to be used to feeling that the synagogue is a good place. The shul is a good place, a happy place. Even children that are not relevant to understanding anything. Like I said before, see the era of Pesach, that all the Jewish people, they tried to bring all the, the, the little babies even to synagogue. To hear the, well, the, era, the, the, the era of Pesach, it's not just an example, but this is relevant to also the nine days because the, why do we make a siyum the day before Passover, because there is a fast day of the firstborn. And this is a preparation for the redemption of Passover. And the and therefore we finish tractates of the Talmud, because the Talmud is what's going to bring the future redemption. And the finishing of these nine days of, of the nine days of, of, that's also a preparation for a redemption, the future redemption. Like the future redemption, it says, like the days of going out of Egypt, I will show you miracles, right? It's a prophecy from Micha, from a prophecy from the prophet Micha. I will show you big miracles. Especially this year, that's going to be Tav Shin Nun Aleph. That was back then. This year is Tav Shin Pei Beit. Miracles and everything. May it be God's will. Yehi Ratzon. May it be God's will, Shadavar, that this thing that we are making these good resolutions to give charity, to learn more Torah, we should have more, what do you say, care in Shema and prayer, Zahir, to have more depth in our prayer, more life, understanding the words of the prayers, finishing Masechet, the tractates of the Talmud, all these resolutions that we made should hurry up, should speed up, and should make closer, and should actually bring in a revealed way the total third redemption and the third temple. And especially when we add to this fact that we've already finished all of the 42 journeys in the desert and the time of exile, right? The Jewish people have, been, have suffered enough, I think, in the last 2,000 years. And now we are right on the border of the future redemption. Or about to cross over the Jordan River. Ma'arava, <clears throat> traveling westward. The Nikhlasim, the Eretz Israel, going to the land of Israel. And in Eretz Israel itself, we're going also more westward to Jerusalem. This holy city. And in Jerusalem itself to the holy mountain, and the holy mountain itself to the holy temple, the third temple. Ah, the Kodesh Kodeshim until we go to the Holy of Holies, which is in the west of the holy temple. Then in it is found the ark and the tablets. And then what's going to be even better? Yakitsu Viranur Shokhneofer. Those who sleep in the ground, all the departed Jews. Or Moshe, Aaron, Moses, and Aaron. <clears throat> well, Aaron was the one who passed away on the first day of, of with them. The call of Tzaddikim and all the Tzaddikim and all the leaders of the Jewish people with them and the previous Rebbe, the leader of our generation with them, together with all of the souls that are alive of all the Jewish people in our generation right now, our youth, our elders, our sons, our daughters. God will gather them all up. Echad achad ben Israel. God, it says, will gather up all the Jews one by one. It's a prophecy of Isaiah. God never will leave the Jewish people. He'll gather them up one at a time, one at a time. <clears throat> The Kulam, all that together, they will learn a new Torah. What does it mean, a new Torah? We'll feel the newness of the Torah, me'ititetz, that it's coming directly from God. Every word, just like it was in Mount Sinai. 
It'll be brand new. Elo at the barn, these are the things that Moses spoke. Uh, somebody showed me the other day, these kids got together and they bought their father. They, the father used to have a, you know, a 1955 Chevy or something like that, you know. And the father's now an old guy. He's like, you know, 80 years old, whatever. And he had to sell this car. He sold it like in the 60s or whatever, because he needed money. They weren't. And the kids found, look around, and they found the car. And they found, I don't know if it's the same car, but exactly the same. They colored it the same color. Maybe it was the same car. And they renewed it. They renewed, they found it in a junk pile somewhere, and they renewed the car and they painted the car brand new and they brought it to the you ever see these videos? Here, Dad, we brought it, all of a sudden the car comes up. Guys, father says, What's this? He says, This is your car you had when you were 20 years old. And the father starts crying and hugging his kids. Thank you. Lad. This is my car. It's a brand new again. That's what the Torah is going to be. The Torah, when we got it at Mount Sinai, it was brand new, fresh. It was something amazing. And since then, eh, you know, little by little, we don't feel the godliness. God's going to make in the future, we're going to feel the new Torah. It's going to be brand new. But of course, not like in our Chevy. It's going to be, we'll feel the godliness of it. Right? The godliness. You get a new Chevy, you don't feel, oh, the factory where it was made, right? This was made in, in the plant and in whatever Detroit. No, the, the, the big deal where it was made. The main thing is the, the car itself. With the Torah, it's not so. The main thing is the manufacturer, God. You'll feel the godliness of every letter of the Torah, every word. By Moses, Moses is the first redeemer. He'll be the last redeemer to all the Jewish people. <clears throat> Look, it says, Ele, these, Mara Be'etzpo, Fomor, Ele, will point to God and we say, Ela Hadavorim, these are the words that Moses spoke. These are the words we'll say, we'll point and we'll say, these are the Moses spoke. We'll see Moses, we'll see godliness, we'll see the Paul, the Gile, take it from Yad Mamash immediately, right now. Let us just one moment. Okay, we'll do the Yom Yom here. Just one second. I just want to get something ready over there. I should have done it before. And I didn't, but I will now. Excuse me. I have another class I get right up with this. And okay. All right, let's do the Yom Yom. Now today there'll be a class at three, three o'clock. We'll learn the Haftorah of this. It's of course of Jeremiah, prophecy of Jeremiah. <clears throat> One of the, um, the reproofs of Jeremiah, which ends off on a promising note, like all the, there's a handwritten note of the Semachetic was discovered. It says that he determined to learn the Talmud and Halakha text six hours every night standing up. He fulfilled this and he completed the entire Talmud, Babylonian and the Jerusalem Talmud, and the four divisions of the Shulchan Aruch, and he did study it all in depth. What it means to truly learn the Torah. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Hope to see you all, God willing, today at 3 o'clock. And tomorrow, also at 8.15 in the morning, we will learn a sikha, beautiful sikha of the Rebbe, about the 42 journeys. Thanks for coming.